I'm gonna show you how to make and serve a nitro cold brew coffee like this one using beer stuff. So my beer kettle, kegs, that sort of thing. Let's do it. So the basic process for making cold brew coffee is to grab some coffee beans. Now a consistent grind size is normally quite important when making a cup of coffee, but a little bit less so with cold brew coffee because we just want coarsely ground beans. I did think about using my grain mill for this, but upon further inspection on the internet, it seems that the oils in the coffee can result in really sort of gunking up that grain mill and I didn't want to mess it up. So you could give that a try if you want, but I've got a couple of other methods to try. Uh, first of all, the most low tech way, which is a Ziploc bag and a hammer. Add the beans to the Ziploc bag, seed it up, and then gently press down, kind of like a pestle. Whew, okay, so that's, worked. Uh, it's a little inconsistent. It's one way of doing it, but my goodness, I had this whole bag. This would take forever. Now another option is this magic bullet, typically used for making smoothies and whatnot. Uh, these come with two blades typically, and you want to make sure you're using the flat blade. Okay, but that's not bad. You can see though, there's some whole beans still in here, or very large pieces of beans not ideal. So instead I am gonna use my blade grinder to finish the rest of this bag. I find that just a few presses on this does a pretty nice job. All done. Okay, so now it's time to steep those grinds and it's beer stuff all the way from here. How I used to do this was I would add the ground up coffee into French press bags. I would add those into mason jars and fill those up with water. And it would take a lot of mason jars to fill up my three gallon keg. And I'm wondering if I could just kind of skip all that nonsense and just use my brewing kettle. So I've got my claw hammer brewing kettle here and I've got my grain basket, which I typically use just to mash. Now, in terms of how much water to add, I have added in some filtered tap water in no other way treated. And I'm adding in a 3.2 gallons of water and to that I'm adding my one kilo of coffee and that's going to give me a water to coffee ratio of 12 to 1 which is my preferred ratio for cold brew coffee and you can see that the bottom of the grain basket now is submerged with water and I'm just going to pour my coffee in and I couldn't possibly do anything in this system without bringing out my whisk so the coffee is submerged and now it's just a case of letting it steep for 12 to 16 hours. I actually ended up leaving this overnight. Now I need to separate the coffee grinds from the coffee and well, it's so easy with this system. I'm just gonna pull the basket up. Smells wonderful. Now I'm gonna put this into a keg. I have a, a mini keg here. This is two and a half gallons, so kind of a half size of your typical corny keg. Beer is, <laughs> coffee, coffee is in the keg. Um, I ended up using some star salad. I don't know if you need to do that with coffee, but it's just old habits. Just looking in the, the bottom of my kettle there, there are a few sort of bits of the coffee grinds that have sort of settled to the bottom, so they did make it through that grain basket. Um, but hopefully I didn't pick up too much of that into the finished coffee that's in here. Now, in order to make this nitro coffee, I need to get it cold. I could just put it in the fridge for like hours at a time, but I'm using coffee stuff today. So I'm gonna use my glycol chilling cooler here and just hook this up to my glycol system. So I've got glycol now running through this cooler into the coffee and back out again. This should chill down this keg in no time. In the meantime, I'm gonna clear it out, clean up my equipment, and uh, then we'll move on to the next stage, the best stage, which is serving this on nitro. Now, in terms of actually dispensing this coffee out of the keg, 
Uh, you might have at home, if you have a nitro stout tap, you might have something called beer gas to pump that out, which is a combination of nitrogen and CO2. Unfortunately, I don't think that works very well with coffee. You really don't want to introduce CO2 into the coffee at all. We're not looking for a fizzy coffee. In order to avoid that and any sort of off flavors, then you just need pure nitrogen. So if you already have a beer gas set up with one of these regulators, well, it will still fit in the nitrogen regulator, but you will need to get a nitrogen canister to serve this. Now, nitrogen doesn't absorb into liquid as well as CO2 does. If you, this is all you have though, you can just put nitrogen into the keg, let it sit there for a little while, at least a few hours, give it a shake. And then eventually you should be able to connect that up to your stout faucet and pour it out. Uh, but I have a little bit of an extra helper. I'm using something in here called a nitro infuser which means that I can just hook this directly up to the cake immediately and start pouring on nitro. So yeah, I think this really worked out. It was a lot easier than doing everything in such small scale with a lot of mason jars and French press brew bags. There's been quite a few coffee related things on this channel recently but if you do want to see more coffee stuff I do have a channel dedicated to that you might see the little hint back here keen on coffee so check that out but anyway thanks for watching